Welcome to the Computer Repair Podcast, episode number 319, Magnus Box. This is our live show where we discuss the ins and outs of running your computer repair business. Our show today is brought to you by Instant House Call, remote support that is easy for you and your customers to use. It's a must-have tool with features like on-demand for your break-fix customers and unattended for managed services. You can do automatic repairs with the auto repair built-in software, and it will save you time and money when you're supporting your customers. Check it out for a free trial at instanthousecall.com and use the offer code PODNUTS. And by BusyBench, the all-in-one management tool simplifying IT for computer repair businesses with a clean and simple interface. Spend more time running your business instead of learning your management software. For a free 14-day trial, just go to busybench.com, use the offer code PODNUTS for 30% off the life of your account. And also by Untangle, next generation firewall. The best solution for bringing powerful network security to your clients in an easy-to-manage and cost-effective package. Ontangle's partnership program helps repair shops add cybersecurity to their services and get you up and running quickly. Get started today at Ontangle.com. Let me introduce the co-host. We have John Dubinsky from the Maven Group. John, how are you doing? Everything is awesome. Everything is awesome. (laughs) Everything's cool when you're part of a team, Jeff. (laughs) That's right. Yay, team. And also joining us, we have Mike Slodowski from Control Alt Delete and Magnus Box. Mike, how you doing? Doing great, Jeff. How's it going? It is going awesome. Not as good as where you're at because apparently it's snowing. It's not looking good out there. I'm looking out the window, and it, it was a nightmare just getting back to get to the show on time. A 30 minute trip took me about 50 minutes, and it was trying to avoid the ditch at all costs. Oh wow! Yeah, that's why I was late too. 30 minute drive took me 90. That's why we're starting late. So my fault. <laughs> Usually Jeff's fault, but this time it's me. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Blame Jeff. All right, John, did you come up with a tip for the week? Yeah, absolutely. I have a tip. Uh, every once in a while, you got to go on a little vacation and just knock off from all this tech stuff. So that's what I did Thursday, Thursday Friday, Saturday. And therefore, I have no other tips than take some time to unwind. Treat yourself right and your spouse or significant other or partner and make sure so you can come back powered up, ready to go, and take on these challenges we face every day. Awesome, man. And that is a tip that we need reminding of all the time. All right, Mike, what do you got for us this week? Oh, as a backup provider now, I, my number one tip is always going to be backup related. It's going to, I want to say, make sure you're always checking your clients' backups. You know, run a restore every now and then. Make sure the files are there and, what, and, and that everything's working the way it should be. Uh, backup systems are not set it and forget it. So you always want to make sure you're keeping an eye on them. And if you aren't keeping an eye on them, you're almost doing a disservice to your clients. So always check your backups, make sure that they're running and that you, uh, that way you don't have that uh, moment when you need them and they're not there. <laughs> now, I'm sure we'll talk about this, but since you brought it up in your tip, how, what should you do when restoring? Should you restore a file? Should you restore a just something real simple? Or do you kind of change it up as you're checking your customers' backups? Depends Depends on uh, what I feel like doing that day. So a lot of times we will do a, we usually do monthly. We have our, uh, we use uh, Synchro for, because I own control at Delete Computer Repair. We use Synchro and I will uh, have auto tickets that pop in to remind me to uh, check their backups. We have about 20 that we uh, we maintain, so we check them. And uh, uh, I usually do a file. Uh, every now and then I'll move a folder and then I will do a restore and compare the file sizes, make sure that they're the same. but it's just simple stuff like that that can save you a, a lot of trouble in the future from having to send the drive out for a recovery. Very good. Okay, so I'm going to actually give a rant. I know, I know, everyone's surprised. Imagine that. Yes, which <laughs> will have an actual tip in the end. So I want to bring this full circle, but I feel, I feel it's it's important to bring stuff like this up so we can all learn from our experiences. And that is, I got an email from a person who will remain nameless. And they basically asked me to turn my YouTube comments on. And they've asked me this about a year and a half ago. And they just asked me again. And they gave a lot of good reasons of why, because people like to comment on videos and it's good interaction for text and all that kind of stuff. And everything was fine until they said, stop being a control freak. Yeah, I tried to be nice, and I was. I, I am nice. But here's the thing. You're right. I control emailing my guests. 
I control setting up the audio. I control setting up the video, the camera equipment, the lighting, everything in my office, posting the show, putting out John's wonderful show notes that he brings to us. I control all those stuff, all that stuff. So yes, I am a control freak. Why? Because it's my show and it's the way I want to do it. And what I had said to this gentleman a while back was that, listen, the reality is if you have things like email, you can email me. You can get a hold of me on Facebook. There's many different ways to contact me. It used to be Google Plus back in the day until they obfuscated that. There's ways to contact me and, and have that inner, inner uh, exchange between texts and, and get the information out there and talk about things. But to me, when you do things like YouTube comments, you have to do one of two things. Okay. I either have to take the time to control those comments and approve or disapprove each and every one. Or I can just let it be like the Wild West and have just all kinds of information that maybe I don't want attached to my particular content. And so I'm doing it the way I want to do it because, again, if, if anybody can go out there, you can start a channel, you can do a video, you can talk about the tech stuff that we talk about, and you can take comments on YouTube or whatever it is you want to do. And so this brings along my tip, and that is, you can do your business any way you want to do it. Now, you can always learn from other people's experiences, and that's good. But sometimes you just have to go, I've got a good idea. I think I want to do it this way. I think this is going to work best for me in the way I do things. So therefore, that's what I'm going to do. And then you'll figure out whether it works or doesn't work. And in this case, I found out that using email as the number one contact method and also we have things like the, the secret Facebook group. Those are great ways to interact with the audience that watches this show. And again, YouTube was one of those things where we do it because it's live. We've got a chat room where people can comment and ask questions. But the thing is, I never looked at YouTube as I'm going to grow this humongous audience on YouTube. That was never my goal. Matter of fact, we, our largest part of the audience is our audio format. Uh, we've probably got maybe 5% of the audience who actually even checks out the YouTube videos on a weekly basis. It's 5%. Yeah, hey, I'll take whatever I can get, but I'm just not going to worry about it that much. And then it, I don't want another job and I want something else to do. So again, just remember, you can do things the way you want to do them because you own your own business and that's okay. John, were you going to say something? No, I mean, my only comment on this is, is it, it like one of the funniest things to comment on YouTube? Or, that's a horrible sentence. I apologize. <laughs> is it one of the mo most uh, intriguing things to read through and just talk about the comments you see on YouTube, which are usually just filth laden? I mean, we have plenty of other places to participate in the show. So I guess you're right. We don't need one more thing to do. Yes, exactly. So I, I appreciate that. And I, it's just one of those things I was thinking about, but I thought I would, I, I, I just want to let people know it's okay to do business your way because everything is awesome. Uh, <laughs> all right, let's go ahead and take a quick break and then we'll get into our main topic. TechCon Unplugged, bringing community together. Join like-minded business owners for a weekend pack with resources to help your IT business thrive. Hear from experts and get one-on-one -on -one time with peers facing the same challenges. Walk away with concrete action items to take to your business to the next level. September 20th through the 22nd, 2019 in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Go to techconunplugged.com and get signed up today. All right, our main topic, we are talking about backing up. And Mike is came on the show to tell us a little bit about his company, Magnus Box. But Mike, before we go into that, why don't you go ahead and, and give us a background story? Obviously, you you own a computer repair shop, and give us a little bit of where you started from and how you get how you got to the point where you started uh, Magnus Box and kind of what you're doing with it there. Definitely, and I appreciate the time to come on the show today. So as you all know, I've been on PodNuts quite a few times. Um, it's fun Googling myself every now and then and seeing all the shows pop up. I know which ones to avoid. <laughs> but uh, 
so uh been running my own IT company for forever uh, with managed services. We do about 60% managed services. The rest is all break fix. Um, and it, it happened around January of last year. I've been using multiple backup solutions. Uh, I don't want, I'm not going to drop any names in the podcast today, um, but we've jumped around from backup solution to backup solution, just trying to find something that would work for us. And every one of them had some kind of a flaw, whether it was pricing, uh, there was something that was excluded that we needed to be backed up by default. And they wouldn't work with us. Um, so I started exploring the idea of rolling my own backup solution. So around January last year, I did some research and I started putting the pieces together to build Magnus Box. Um, it started out as a little side project just for fun. I remember just, you know, just toying around with uh, servers and deploying things and seeing how the best most cost-effective way to run things. So I didn't want to just slap together a cheap solution that would save money. You know, I wanted to build something that was reliable, dependable, um, and not just trying to save a few dollars. So <clears throat> I uh, put the piece together. I pushed it out to my clients, my computer repair business clients, last year. And within two weeks, 25 of my clients had signed up. And it's and it really started. That's what started the ball rolling. And I'm like, hey, I can start selling this to my clients and out to the public. So I put together a website, uh, used WHMCS trying to get everything up and ru running, and I got it up and running, and then no one signed up after that. After I got my client base signed up, I found that it's very hard to sell something like that to the general public. Uh, and then about Thanksgiving last year, my good buddy uh, Paco, you all know Paco, and we were talking, and I'm like, man, I cannot get this backup solution off the ground. I said, I got a great system. I got a great platform. Um, and he's like, Mike, he goes, why don't you go channel only? And that's what, like, the wheels got started spinning in my head. And I'm like, wow, I never thought of this. And so I got to give credit where it's due. And he is the one that really started our push. And uh, so around Thanksgiving, I ripped apart everything I had put together for selling to the public. I mean, I ripped out everything, billing, accounting credit card processing, and I redesigned everything from the ground up and launched uh, Magnus Box to channel only. So we only sell to other technology companies after things. I launched it after Thanksgiving, and we went from having 25 endpoints to today we now have 241 endpoints. I believe we have 70 partners signed up for Magnus Box so that they can sell it. And we have over 30, we just hit 35 terabytes uh, a few days ago. So we're celebrating that. We're hoping to uh, hit 250 devices here. Um, and then we're going to get ambitious and try to push for 500 after that, try to raise our goal and raise the bar up. So um, it's been a very fun and interesting journey. Um, launching Magnus, Magnus Box has really pulled me out of my comfort zone. I used to be the one that just stayed back and quiet. And now I'm doing demos all the time in front of people. and. I now we now have uh, clients in four different countries, partners in four different countries, and it's been a blast. I tell you, I've learned more in the last uh, last six months than I've learned in the last couple of years in IT. It's been fun. That is a very cool origin story. And then, Mike, why don't you let people know? Uh, obviously, the name Magnus Box has been around for a while, and can you kind of tell us the transition of how all that came about? Yep, so Magnus Box was actually, the name and the branding and the logos was actually launched a few years ago. I want to say about four or five years ago by another IT provider. Um, he had some issues and went out of business. Um, and I contacted him because I am horrible at naming things. I can't come up, I can't design a logo or a name to save my life. I mean, I went with Control Alt Delete uh, Computer Repair just because it was on my keyboard and it was quick to throw on a business card. <laughs> <laughs> Um, thank, thank God for Fiverr uh, business card designers. But uh, so Magnus Box is not owned by the previous owner that started it three, four years ago. I know that's been a huge misconception. It's one of our number one things that come up with talking with technicians is that um, he has no affiliation with Magnus Box. Uh, me and my wife own this company, and uh, and uh, I just want to get the, I just want to clear the air and start off with a clean slate on that. That this is a brand new company. Very good. All right, so John, let me ask you. Basically, I know you have started using the Magnus Box for backup, and what kind of led you to that whole decision? Uh, well, being uh, friends with Paco LeBron, uh, Paco brought it up to me uh, as we were 
you know, always evaluating and looking for a better solution. And I, you know, I'm happy to say that I'm part of that 35 terabytes and 241 and devices or uh, devices and, you know, that, that partner count. Um, what really drew, drew the uh, me to Magnus box, uh, you know, full disclosure, I'm a customer and all that was the pricing, which I'll let uh, Mike get into that and the ad ability to do a full white labeled server of all my own. Um, and then be able to have a little bit more control and that direct contact, uh, contact to Mike to, not that I've had really had any problems now that I'm thinking about it, but just working through ideas uh, and strategies and all that kind of stuff. You kind of get that one-on-one -on -one, uh, support that we give to our clients because, you know, Mike hands that back to you since it's a white label channel only solution. Very cool. So Mike, why don't you let us know what, what is what makes Magnus Box different, or what what is the uh, the features that Magnus Box has, and and what can it do for business owners out there? It, the number one thing you had me with is channel friendly, and channel only. Um, I think that's very important because everybody else out there usually will sell not only to us to resell it. We're making the company money, but they're also selling to the consumer. So a lot of times your margins on that can vary and it's uh, it, it can be disheartening sometimes. And, and a lot of people don't want to even mess around with things like backup, but backup is so important that it needs to be, everybody needs it, whether you residential customers to businesses absolutely need backup of some sort. Definitely. So like John said, and, and John was uh, one of the ones that got us started as well. So not to, uh, uh, I just share the light with uh, Paco. It was uh, John. He was one of our first ones to sign up, which really um, opened my eyes that this is a, a, a viable product and a service. So uh, we appreciate John jumping on board right away and helping us get our feet off the ground there. And uh, But I think what makes us stand out from the rest of the pack is that we are computer repair. We, I own a, we own a computer repair company um, in that... My goal when, when launching the techs was to help other techs, not to just, you know, here's a product, pay me, and then good luck, have fun with it, and figure it out on your own. We actually, I actually customize the level of support. So, I mean, if our, our hours of support operations are 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., but usually we respond within five minutes. And I think, uh, like I said to John before the show, we had a uh, alert pop up at 3 a.m. this morning saying a bunch of servers went offline. It was just a false alarm, thankfully. Um, but I was on, I was up immediately as soon as I got the phone call and taking care of things. But it's that one-on-one -on -one support that's really sold us is that um, like the one that like we had someone sign up last week. They said that they like the fact that we're local because they was just downstate Michigan from us. And he liked the fact that we become part of his team. So like we don't just tell you, here you go, here's your backup product. We actually help you set it up. We walk you through getting it up and running. We will even remote in and show you how to set it up best practice. And, and we will help you take care of any problems that you come across as soon as you let us know about them. So uh, I think that's one of our big differentiating factors between us and the big guys out there is that we're smaller, uh, which scares a lot of people because we're, we're still in that startup phase. We have growing pains like everyone else. And um, we try to dedicate, we try to customize our service to help everyone, you know? Um, and then as far as pricing goes with Magnus Box, we uh, don't put our pricing on our website. It's not because we're hiding something. It's because we have two different tier plans with Magnus Box. We have a branded plan, which is our branding, our logo. And we have the white label plan like John's on. It has his branding, his logo, um, everything down to the icon on the desktop, to the system tray, and even in the uh, uh, add remove programs is listed as John's company right now on all of his endpoints. Um, so our pricing is $35 for a branded setup. Uh, we can get those set up pretty quickly. We have quite a few people on those. Um, and we are $65 a month for the white label server. And what that gets you is it gets you the dedicated server we assign you. It includes support. It includes the patching update and uh, helping you out with getting everything off the ground. And so that's the monthly platform fee. And then it's $5 per endpoint for desktops and $15 uh, per endpoint for servers. And so we try to be, we analyze all the different companies out there that did backup or offer backup services. And we were trying to become, we we're trying to be in middle of the road. We're not trying to copy what they're doing. Uh, we're doing our own thing. So a lot of people ask, why don't you offer XYZ services, part of it or solution with it? And we're doing our own thing. 
And that's what it comes down to. Um, but so we don't place our pricing on our website because with those branded clients, uh, sometimes their customers will get smart and want to undercut the, the partners and they will try to go to our website and see the pricing. And then anyone that contacts us, we verify that they're an actual IT company. We make sure they're, you know, they have a domain name. We make sure that they have a website. Uh, we check their their Facebook just to make sure. We just want to make sure, you know, there's nothing worse than when your pricing gets out there when you're trying to, you know, keep it quiet. Very cool. And the question I would ask for you, and probably something that that people would ask, is that obviously you you don't have a bunch of servers in your basement that you're right. uh, you're looking at that uh, you're, you're maintaining there. And so if your house burns down, so I would imagine you're probably using some sort of cloud service to back up all this information. It's the same as actually a lot of the other companies out there, right? Correct. Yeah. Oh, wait, you're not supposed to put backup servers in your house? <laughs> you, oh. There are people that do that, so I don't want to say too many bad things about that. It's just, to me, that's not worth the effort. That's just me. We'll move those tomorrow. No, we don't have any servers in-house. I mean, I live in the middle of nowhere, Merrill, Michigan here, Saginaw, Michigan. Uh, but we uh, we are very transparent. I feel that from day one, I want to be a very transparent company. If someone asks me a question about where's the data stored, I mean, I won't give you guys access to the storage arrays that we have, but uh, um, we list all of the vendors that power our platform right on our website, and that's how transparent we are. And so we, uh, bandwidth's not cheap, <laughs> pushing that much data. I mean, I seen, uh, after John signed up, I was watching, and I mean, I, I seen that uh, we were hitting 100, 200 megs, but uh, luckily we have enough bandwidth to be able to handle that. And that's, that's what I did from day one, though, is I plan for future growth while setting everything up. Um, and that's what happened with the previous owner of uh, Magnus Box is that he hit a bottle cap and uh, 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 a bandwidth and a storage cap. And my goal was to make sure that stuff like that didn't happen. So I've learned from what other companies have done and try to throw that into Magnus Box. So we take the best of what we see around everyone else doing and try to integrate it. That's good. A few questions from the chat, just so I'm on the same page too. Uh, well, first one is, is uh, uh, JD sent, uh, oh no, your computer guy sent questions to Mike when he should have been sleeping and he still responded. So <laughs> Mike, you better, you better schedule some sleep time in there. Um, uh, there are image backups to the cloud. So you could do a full image backup to the cloud. Uh, and Mike, you fix uh, any of this along the way because I'm just going to throw everything out there for a full disclosure that I know. Uh, the backups are unlimited storage retention with uh, full scheduling and full versioning. Um, I found the client, full disclosure, is software by Comet. So if you, I guess, want to take a baseline look, you could go look at Comet backup. Uh, there's a lot of reasons I would suggest you choose Magnus Box over Comet, but the core of like the software platform that you're going to be using on endpoints is by Comet. And it's pretty nice if you've ever used anything like uh, Cloudberry, all that. Same feature set. Um, I actually find maybe the Comet software even a little easier to use. Uh, we can back up Windows, Linux, and Mac machines using Magnus Box. Uh, no, Mike does not store <laughs> his stuff in his basements. Um, Mike, I think if I remember right, you're using some DigitalOcean servers and some other partners, so you have servers all over. Um, I actually asked Mike for this information and actually did a little FAQ sheet for my clients that needed it for their compliance and other needs so that they could give that to either their insurance providers and all that sort of stuff. So I found that very nice. But a little bit on the homepage, Mike, maybe I'd ask you to go into and talk a little bit about who Cloud Radar is. Maybe go into a little bit more about Comet, uh, OVH, uh, DigitalOcean, and Volter just on uh, how they play a role in what you're doing? Yep, so definitely. So there's a lot of pieces that play a role into our the Magnus Box platform. So we are powered by Comet. Um, they're a great group of guys. I tell you what, I'm very, I work very closely with um, oh, it's uh, Josh over there, and he's one of the managers over there. And we're actually growing so fast that we're now beta testers for their platform. So we actually are getting our test, test network set up and our test back, backup platform set up. So um, a lot of what our clients, like John, like you, you recommend, and a few other of our partners, they actually will push out and releases or help direct the company, which is nice. It's nice having a voice in a company. Um, so, comments what powers us, great people. Cloud Radar is one of our two uh, monitoring platforms that ma that monitors all of our servers that we have that run the Magnus Box platform. So, I know the uh, one of the owners over there. Uh, 
it's a newer company. Uh, they it works great for monitoring Linux servers, and it will tell me if the, if the platform goes offline, if it loses uh, internet connection, if the uh, web portal is not accessible, it'll pop in. Like like I said earlier, I had an alert at 9, 4 a.m. this morning or 3 a.m. this morning that nine servers went offline, and luckily it was just a, a hiccup in the agent. So um, most of our storage arrays are powered over at OVH. Um, we uh, have three storage arrays, uh, as I call them. Uh, there's two in the United States and one in good old Canada, our friends to the north there. Um, and all the data gets replicated between these three storage arrays in real time. So if one of our servers was to go down, we can issue a command and we can push all the uh, backup clients to a different storage array to prevent any kind of data loss or downtime. Uh, we had a few hiccups a few months ago. Uh, we were able to get it taken care of when, a, when there was a uh, network outage near one of our providers. So. And then DigitalOcean and Vulture are the uh, two that we use for spinning up our partners' servers. Uh, we they work we work closely closely with them, uh, and they're really the backbone of getting those white label servers up and running and making sure everything is running smoothly. Uh, we're so transparent, and that's why we place this on our website. I mean, you can go and roll your own backup platform. We've already I already had the infrastructure invested in with my own clients, which is why it wasn't an issue to. Uh, launch us over to the IT community. Um, someone else that's not on that list that I got to add is uh, Uptime. I think it's Uptime Robot. Yeah, they uh, we put a uh, a network status right on our website. That's how much we want to show our transparency. Is every one of the servers that we have launched is listed right on our website, showing the current uptime. Like we had a few little hiccups last week. Uh, we got it taken care of, but uh, we're not at 100% across the board. We're at 98.889% right now. So I'm hoping that goes back up soon. <laughs> but I mean, it's, but we want to be honest. 98% on anything is actually pretty darn good. And I, I get it. Not everything's going to be 100%, but uh, that's, that's still pretty good uptime. And, and uh, Mike, I like your transparency on a lot of stuff. Most of the time, it's all in the company that you're you're working with, mainly being you. And knowing, liking, and trusting you and the things you're going to bring to the table. And that's the way I always look at any type of business relationship. Either you're going to know, like, and trust somebody, and really all that other stuff really doesn't matter. But just be, you're throwing it out there to let everybody that's checking you out figure out if that's going to be a fit for them. And so I, I like that because I think you're doing the things right. Yeah. And, you know, I like when it comes down to it, a lot of the comments that we get are <clears throat> yes, I could do this on my own, but. I would rather spend my time taking care of my clients going out and making more money. And so a lot of people come to us because we become that extension of their team without the added payroll. And uh, we'll help them to get this off the ground and get it working for them. We monitor the servers for them. So, and I specialize in Linux and in programming. So it's not, it's something that's already in my skill set. And a lot of people are, are, can dabble with Linux, but to get it really set up and running the way it should be, you got to, Got to do quite a bit of setup, so. Oh, I'd rather stick two forks in my eye than mess with Linux. So, but fun stuff. God, God bless you, man. I mean, hey, Mike, hey, Mike, how would you handle somebody that's overseas, like maybe in New Zealand or Australia or something like that? Is there any uh, concerns with doing anything like that? Just some multiple questions out of the chat. Yep, yep. So, uh, we have a client in Paris, and I believe uh, I see your computer guy there in chat. Um, his server is in Australia, so he is right. Uh, but we do have clients in other countries, which is amazing because I get more inquiries. I've been getting more inquiries from New Zealand than the United States. Uh, and it, bandwidth is usually a, a huge issue as there's a little bit of a latency back to our storage race. Because right now, all of our storage is in the United States. We are looking into expanding our storage servers over into uh, into other countries once we get to a certain baseline where it makes sense with an interest. You don't want to launch servers without having the uh, the need for it. Um, but uh, yeah, so we have we can we can spin up servers anywhere. We just became GDPR compliant a few about a month or two ago. We we spent the time and the resources to go through GDPR with a fine tooth comb, and that's you know people don't like it, but I kind of like it after working with it. It makes sense what they're requesting in GDPR. So we try to comply with everything. We're HIPAA compliant. Um, we won't access any data 
I know you got you got quite a few clients, uh, John. So yeah, that really attracted me to the product because it was just simple, and you were able to provide me with all the information I needed. I mean, it wasn't a fight with like some clients. You kind of already understood what I was asking as I asked the question, so that made it very nice for me. Oh, definitely. All right, guys, let's go ahead and take another break, and then we will continue on with this topic. Our show today is brought to you by BusyBench. Remember when running your business was simple? BusyBench sure does. Wouldn't it be nice to quickly create a repair ticket, generate an invoice with a single click, and manage thousands of customers completely free of charge? BusyBench thinks you will enjoy adding an unlimited number of customers, invoices, estimates, and inventory items so much you might forget we have paid features too. But don't worry, when your business grows and you need things like SLA alerts, payment processing, and recurring subscriptions, BusyBench will be with you every step of the way. Turn a ticket into an invoice with a single click. If you've added inventory items to a ticket, they will be added to the invoice as well. New invoicing module allows you to track when a customer opens an invoice and determines when it was viewed. Additionally, customers can pay that same invoice online. Manage your assets with the predefined metrics and customization options. Easily track everything from customer serial numbers to logon passwords and device details from a single location. Receive daily digest recapping all of your activities such as tickets created, invoices generated, and payments received. Go to busybench.com and start your free account today. When you decide to upgrade, use the offer code PODNUTS for 30% off the life of your account. All right, so continuing on with backing up. Now, Mike, let me ask you a question kind of off, off the wall a little bit. When it comes to backing up, I, I think the same problems we, we were having probably 10 years ago when we were trying to talk to everybody about backing up, and back then it was a lot different. Do you still see a lot of people trying to hold out on that whole uh, backing up thing or, or their customers not wanting to back up? Uh, like they should? Yeah, I mean, it comes down to the easiest way to sell a backup is after the client's already lost all the data and then they want it back and they realize it's going to cost a fortune and then they afterwards they back up but the data's already gone. That's what it's always been, even in my computer businesses. No one wants to pay for the backup until they've already lost it. I mean, they got to have that really good tipping point um, to see that they need it. And so it's just trying to convince them ahead of time that, hey, there's, you need an affordable backup solution. And nine times out of 10, just file and folder backup is what a, what a client needs. It's just a simple file and folder, just something that's, that just runs. But I do, I do agree that it is still an issue today. And uh, John, would you, would you concur with that with your, uh, your customer base? Yeah, but I also think Madness Box, maybe due to its pricing, offers a very, you know, I even hate to say like a value offer because, I mean, the pricing is so reasonable, but that makes it sound like a... I don't want a dog carbonite or something like that, but you know, the pricing is so affordable for what you're getting here that it's, you know, if you have a client that's resistant to, you know, jumping on board with something in this category uh, with this kind of feature set at this price, then, you know, make sure you get a couple of emails back and forth to protect yourself because, you know, I, I don't know what else you're going to offer because this is almost like a no brainer to me. Um, you know, and, to jump on that a little bit, you know, I bring up Carbonite. The other nice thing about Mad Magnus Box is like, Mike's never going to contact your clients. Like sometimes that uh, renewal message from Carbonite, you know, if you put their ad email address in the system, Carbonite's going to reach out to your customer directly. Maybe you don't want that. Uh, and, and just to add a little bit about, you know, another feature that I like is in any good backup product before it goes up to the cloud, that, that data is encrypted prior to leaving the endpoint, whether that's a server or just a regular PC, before it even hits the Magnus Box data center, which means, you know, when it's encrypted and leaving, that means nobody at Magnus Box, Mike or anybody else is going to be able to see that data. And that's, you know, the only person that's going to be able to see that is you with the account login and or your customer. So, you know, those are two big things that I really found attractive too. And again, back to the initial question, come on. I mean, the pricing is so nice that, uh, you know, if your customer is resisting that, you know, th there's probably a stronger conversation you have to have, or they just don't realize the value. And then again, it's going to come full circle when something does happen. They're going to say, hey, why didn't we do that? And you'll say, 
we talked about it. <laughs> exactly. And, oh, and the other thing, Mike, you're not mentioning either that I forget, you know, at some of your programs, you provide a couple NFR licenses for us to use too, for either testing internal or for sales purposes or something like that, which I found very attractive as well. Yep. So what we do is, and, and I'll start with the signup process, is we have a, a partner signup form on our website, and that doesn't get you to any, any kind of commitment. It's just it provides all the information I need to set up an account for the trial. So we offer a 14-day free trial. Uh, we send out the pricing, and our, it's available in our partner portal, which has our pricing. And we just launched our referral program, which I'll get into in a moment. Um, but uh, yeah, we offer uh, one NFR license if you're on the branded plan, and we offer three NFR licenses if you're on a white label server. And uh, you can install that on desktop or your own servers, um, and you can throw as much data as it. At, at it as you want. We had a client who, a partner who signed up for a demo and pushed 14 terabytes up to our network over a week period. And I, I was gotta say, I was, I was gonna, I was gonna, you know, we we have unlimited data and I was gonna let it go and I did and it 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 handled it. I mean the 14 terabytes compressed down to about seven, eight, and and it worked great. <laughs> wow. That's a lot. That's a lot of data. I'm like, well, I'm like, I'm just thinking, and I'm thinking bandwidth. I'm like, man, I'm surprised this guy is ISP isn't contacting him and like heavily throttling like 14 terabytes over a few day period. <laughs> got I'm speed. often surprised at how quickly the backup goes. You know, I just did this too with a server migration where I moved a customer from one server to another, and then did a whole another full upload of all the data from the new server and. Man, it, it was quick. I was really surprised. What I thought was going to take a couple of days was done in a day. So, and they didn't have the, you know, they don't have the fastest internet. They had a Comcast pipe, which is nice and fast down, but the upload speeds, as, as you know, aren't the greatest. So, I'm very surprised. Um, the Comet software or whatever's handling that part part of the uh, the process does a great job. I mean, I'm not going to lie. There are a few caveats with a few things. I mean, you've mentioned a few of them, John, regarding. Uh, Google file stream. We're trying to get that one fixed. We're working with comments to try to repair it. It's top on my list. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, well, let's just talk about a little bit about that. So Google now has two sort of Google Drive uh, endpoint agents. You know, you can do backup and sync for more of the personal level. And then you have Google Drive file stream. So I'm a G Suite guy. So a lot of my customers I want to say a lot, a good percentage of my customers do use Google file stream. And right now the Comet software has a hard time getting in there and backing up whatever is on that, on, in that, what do we want to call it? Quote unquote G drive yeah. that's on the local machine. Exactly. So, you know, the great thing about it is I just didn't put a ticket in and it's disappearing. I know it's not working right now, but the nice thing about it is Mike pokes me, you know, I don't even have to remember to follow up on the ticket. Mike pokes me every once in a while and says, Hey, still working on this. So, you know, I'm not too worried about it. It's not a huge issue at this point, but you know that could be a game changer for stuff. But at least I know I have an advocate working on it for me. Yeah, and, and there's a lot of stuff that's in the works too. There's things that I can't discuss yet, but I can tell you what, there are some pretty impressive features that'll be coming in the next quarter or two. And so we do quarterly updates with on, under the uh, Comet schedule where they release quarterly updates. And it's usually a major feature release. So. We've been pretty impressed. They've been going the direction that we've asked and regarding uh, features that we're looking for. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, there's there's a few caveats. I mean, like with the file stream, uh, OneDrive is also, it doesn't like uh, snap, uh, VSS snapshots. So you got to turn that off. I mean, it, everything seems to work, but it's just making sure that you have the files selected that you want to back up in the first place. <laughs> Well, yeah, the OneDrive solution was pretty easy. We just set up a separate backup for that folder, and you just have to adjust a couple settings to make that kind of uh, cooperate, I guess would be the word. Um, and, and to go back, you know, I think, Jeff, you asked me what are the primary reasons I chose Magnus Box, or there was a question like that. Really what attracted me to versus other backup uh, platforms was just a flat pricing, meaning uh, – depending on how you bill your clients, I bill my clients on a monthly basis on the same day every month. So now I have predictable pricing. So in the in the uh, uh, chat room, there was a question based on pricing and, you know, is it a percentage or is it, uh, uh, do we set the pricing? You set the pricing. Again, Mike said, we, you know, he doesn't disclose some pricing on the page. So you can choose $5 more than what uh, Mike is charging you, or you can charge $100 more. It really doesn't matter. You set your pricing. 
But the idea is I always know what my cost is going to be every month. I don't have to worry about how much storage my clients are using. I just know that I have a you know, secure, reliable backup that's happening. I have all my revisions and unlimited storage, and I know what the cost is. So it takes that whole worry about, uh, uh, you know, fluctuation in pricing and maybe having to adjust my billing or have to set up some sort of automated system to dump back into QuickBooks or however you do your billing. You just don't have to worry about that. Yeah, and, and on, add, to add on top of that, even though it's unlimited data, if you are already doing a tiered pricing plan, you can actually set it up per account where you can say, hey, you know, you're paying for 10 gigabytes, and you can actually put that limit in their account, and it will stop, and it'll show a, 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 a I call it a speedometer. It'll show a speedometer on the uh, dashboard, and it'll say how much data they're using. So if you do already do tiered pricing, it is an option available for you. And on top of that, we do file and folder, uh, SQL, MySQL, there was also um, System State, and we got a bunch of new ones that are coming out here in the next quarter. So, and it's, uh, we do revisioning, or um, versioning, that's the word I was thinking of. Um, so if your client does get attacked by ransomware, you can go to a previous backup, and it will only back up the changes. So, as usual, the initial backup takes the longest. I'm sure you've seen that on a few of your clients, John, and then after that, I mean, my backup for my laptop here that we're on, it's it takes me about 60 seconds, depending on what I put on it throughout the day. So as far as as far as versioning, how many versions does it actually do? Unlimited. And we don't limit the number. You can, and if wow. you want to, you can limit them. So you can have it set to delete backups after a certain amount of days, after, you know, only, only keep 10 backups. Um, but yeah, we don't restrict anything. And... Uh, I guess we'll see how that plays out in two, three, five, ten years, but I don't see it being an issue. We have the bandwidth, we have the storage space. We just keep adding more services we need them for the space, and um, we just try to make sure we stay ahead of that uh, and, and make sure we're, we're prepared for that 14 terabyte upload at one time. <laughs> <laughs> in the chat, we do have a question from JD asking who tests the backups to make sure they work. Um, my understanding at this time, and what I do is that uh, it is up to us as the reseller or the partner to test our uh, the backups for our clients. Um, there is, quote unquote, no sort of, uh, what, you know, what's data claim to fame, that they'll spin up a virtual machine and, you know, have you show that the backup is working or has worked. So that's on us right now. I don't know if there's any feature coming in the future, Mike, to uh, automate that process. Maybe you can speak to that. And before you answer that, I'll add on, uh, your computer guy is still waiting for Office 365 backups. Look, nobody wants that, but it'd be nice to have G Suite backups. <laughs> <laughs> I but, but also on that too, and I'll make a comment. He says he'd like to see a better GUI. Um, you know, I I wouldn't agree with that. The GUI is quote unquote not the prettiest thing out there, but I do find it functional. It, you know, it could have. Um, it does look like he says it looks like it was designed by developers for developers, and you know, I might agree with that. But again, um, I don't know how much my end users are actually looking at the GUI. It's just me. So as long as I can understand that and I have the backup set up, um, I don't know any of my end users that really give a darn about what it looks like. Not, not picking on your computer guy, but really I think all they care about is that we get the data back if needed. Yeah, and so as far as the Office 365, and I, I, I'm a G Suite user myself, so um, it's, uh, it's in, it's being looked at, it's, it's possibly being planned. Oh, John left us. I'm still here. I'm still here. Video off oh. for a sec. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> and so it's, it's in the works, uh, Office 365 and some more online. I know Android uh, backup is in the works as well. Uh, what was the other question here? Who tests the backup? So like I said earlier, we try to become a part of your team. So we're always there to assist you, but as far as testing your client's backups, that would be the responsibility of the partner. Um, with 241 devices, it'd be a little bit of a headache to try to get in there and uh, test the backups individually. But we do maintain admin access to all the servers for maintenance and for troubleshooting and tech support. So uh, we won't touch your backups unless you specifically ask us to go in and take a look at something. Uh, which it makes life easier instead of, you know, passing around logs. I can just go in and say, yep, that was that broke because of this reason. Let's change it here and fix it. And then I send you what I changed. And I think I've, we've done that a few times, John, where there was an issue updating a server. And I just said, hey, John, you got to go and uh, push this uh, install back out to this server over here. And it, it took it was no problem at all. We can automate the uh, 
update process, but every now and then you get a computer that decides not to cooperate for some reason. Yeah, out of all the endpoints I've had, I think we've had maybe three or two or three or four over the entire time I've been a partner where I've had to go in and manually push the software update for whatever reason. Um, the nice thing is, is you've walked through, you know, I have a subdomain set up that takes me right to the backup homepage. Uh, so you can download the software right from there. It, it's so easy that you could actually have an end user client do it if you really wanted to. Um, uh, Rick is asking uh, if the backup software can be used for a local only, like a uh, backup to a land share or USB backup, or is it cloud only at this time? Mike? Yep. So you can do both. We recommend both. I know all of our servers for our computer repair clients, um, we actually require them to have an external hard drive on site and they purchase it. So you can do local only. You can do cloud only. We recommend doing both. Um, the nice thing with the local only is the data is encrypted when it goes to that that storage array or that storage device. So um, if you tell it to back up to an external hard drive and some disgruntled employee thinks they're going to stick it to the company by walking off that hard drive, I mean, yes, it's a bad thing, but good luck. All that data is encrypted. The only way to restore from the heart, the uh, external hard drive is to access it through the Magnus Box application because the way the encryption works, and we have the encryption pretty uh, a high level overview of the encryption on our website there in our FAQ section. Um, you can't you can't access anything in the software maintains those encryption keys we don't let the techs manage the encryption keys so i know we've lost a few clients or partners because of that but uh we think it's better that no single person has access to the keys because not even we do we don't have access to the encryption at all it's all automated it happens automatically and it's, it's a nice thing and the nice thing about that is then you're actually getting monitoring you know from the from your home page with Magnus Box of that local backup as well. Because yeah, you know, all the logs are right there for you to see uh, if that device is online or what has happened in the last 24 hours or you know what's going on with those backups, even those local ones. Yeah, definitely. And like I said, it's, it's easy. We're actually, uh, something that I've been wanting to work on is we're trying to get the logistics worked out for uh, rest, Restore by Mail. Um, it's, we've had a few requests for it. It's just working out the, uh, because you have to log into the application. So we'd have to pass the username and credentials, which is, you know, a security risk. So we're just trying to see if that's a, a viable option to do uh, seed loading or restore by mail through external hard drives. So something on my list I've been wanting to do for a little while. Now, Mike, let me ask you a question on the, um, on the uh, uh, image backups. Yep. Now, those can be stored locally and in the cloud, correct? Yes, yeah, so if you're going to do uh, system state backups, we highly recommend doing it locally and on the cloud. Just because if you need to restore from one, you've got to <clears throat> excuse me, you've got to restore the backup to from another computer, and then you can work with the system state from there. So you always want to make sure you have an external hard drive on site that's storing those images, just for time sensitive. It's all about how long is it going to take to get it back up and running, um, and you want to make sure that you can get it back up and running as fast as you can. So. Um, there is, like I said, there is a pretty impressive feature coming in the next quarter, so I, I can't want say anything about it yet. I've been sworn to secrecy by Comet, so, uh, but it, it's something that everyone's been wanting, and it's top on our list of features. So, you know, like anything else, you know, when you try out an RMM or a backup solution, whether you know, depending, I think a lot of guys have a have an idea in their mind how they want something to work and what they're comfortable to work, how, you know, the formats and all that. What I would encourage you, anybody to do is reach out to Mike either, I mean, he's monitoring the chat on his page all the time, hopefully not right now since he's on the show and we expect his full attention, that's just how we are. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but um, I would contact Mike and he can spin you up and get you a 14 day trial and just load it on your own box and just see what happens. That will give you a good introduction into the Comet software, you know, the Magnus Box interface, um, to see how those local backups work. Um, if you got some, uh, SQL, MySQL, or even Microsoft SQL that you want to back up, which is a huge plus with this software because there's no extra charge to do that. It's already in the client, unlike some other uh, platforms where they charge you a different price or actually charge you more um, for, to back up some SQL databases or stuff like that. You know, the m I guess my point of my rant here is to make sure that you're comfortable with the restore process because that is really the most important 
point of all of this that that you can get the data back for the client when you're under the gun. Something bad happens, uh, your phone, your email is blowing up because they need data back. Are are you comfortable with the solution and confident with the solution that you can get the data back? That's what this is all about. So, you know, you got to have that confidence with any solution, Magnusbox, Dato, Cloudbear, whoever you're choosing. And that's why I would encourage you to jump on that uh, 14 day trial or any trial with any product that you use. Yeah, and we're pretty open with the 14 day trial. I mean, if you need a few more days on top of that, we're not going to say no, absolutely not sign up now. We're very, we want to help you. Our whole goal is to make sure that your clients are taken care of and that our solution will work for your clients. And I understand that we're not going to be a private fit for everyone. We've had a few that it didn't work out in the end, but uh, uh, we, we try to be there for you and your clients. And <laughs> they you know I thought it was funny when someone said I answered, but I should have been sleeping. I remember that one too, by the way. And that was about 2 a.m. in the morning here. <laughs> and I just phone, phone pinged and I just, I was going to grab it quick before heading off for the night. <laughs> Here's a good question from the chat, if you would, Mike. Uh, can you talk a little bit of re about restore? Basically, how do you do it from both? F what are the options when you're doing a file restore? I mean, I know there's the obvious one from the client, but maybe you can you speak to a little bit how maybe you can do a web restore if that option's available? And then speak to a little bit about an image backup restore, how that process works. Yeah, so file, file restore is pretty simple. So if the computer is working, uh, or let's say the hard drive didn't fail, um, you can just restore through the application. There is no way to restore through the web client at this time. It's something that we've been looking into, but there's a few caveats with it because like you can't restore, you wouldn't be able to restore through the web client from a USB drive that's connected to a different computer on the network. So um, there is a few caveats with it, but there is no web restore at the moment. It's something that is in the works, but doing it from the application is pretty simple. Um, the only slow point is just the only limitation is based on your bandwidth that you have. I mean, our, our servers have uh, gigabit ports on all of them that come from our storage arrays. So um, files are probably the easiest. File and folders are the easiest ones. Um, you can do individual files. You can restore everything in the backup. Um, if the computer that you're working on died, you can always access the files from a second computer uh, that's that just logs into the application. So. Um, now, image backups are a little bit more tricky for system state. Uh, it creates a VHD file, and uh, you can work with it from there. I'm actually, I just got done recording a, uh, system, a system state restore video, so I just got to get with Jeff and figure out what he uses for video editing for the show, and uh, we're kind of putting that out to our group here. But it's pretty quick. Uh, like I said, our only limitation is based on your network speed. Very cool. All right, let's go ahead and take another quick break, and then we will continue on with this topic and touch on anything maybe we haven't talked about yet. Our show today is brought to you by Untangle Next Generation Firewall, designed to provide your small to medium business customers with the easiest, most cost-effective solution for network security. Untangle is a fast way to add cybersecurity to your service offerings. We've taken enterprise-grade security and put it into a platform that makes it easy to get started and is risk-free. There's no steep learning curve with Untangle. Instead, you'll get a browser-based dashboard that lets you see the status of your managed networks at a glance. You'll enjoy on-the-box reporting included at no extra cost, plus customizable alerts that integrate easily with apps like PagerDuty and VictorOps. Make it simple to stay on top of any incidents that do occur. Untangle NG Firewall not only protects your clients with gateway antivirus, spam blocking, and intrusion prevention, but also gives you control over traffic at the application level with web content filtering, app control, and full SSL inspection. You'll also get WAN optimization features like balancing, failover, and bandwidth control. Whether you need VPN options or a captive portal or secure Wi-Fi, Untangle NG Firewall has everything you want in a single solution. With lots of freebies like centralized management with zero touch provisioning and a cloud threat intelligence scan, or a second layer of defense included at no extra cost. There's no better choice than Untangle for getting visibility into and control over network traffic, helping your clients safely connect to the internet to their business in critical applications. Visit Untangle.com forward slash podnuts today and get a free no obligation trial of NG Firewall and save 15% on any purchase with the promo code podnuts. All right. So Mike, 
what are some of the things that maybe we haven't talked about as of yet, as far as maybe anything we've missed as far as backups? <clears throat> yeah, definitely. So I see someone in the chat there. They just wanted me to go over pricing one more time. Give me a second here. Didn't want to blow up anyone's speakers there. So, <laughs> um, so regarding pricing, so there's a monthly fee. I hate to call it a platform fee because then people get instantly shut off at the idea. So there's a monthly platform fee, which covers the server costs, the maintenance, support, patching, monitoring, all that fun stuff. And that's $35 for branded, $65 for white label. And that's a per month fee. Um, that's a one time per month fee, not a per client. So I have to have that come up a few times. And then pricing is per device, $5 for unlimited data for desktops, laptops, workstations, and $15 per device for servers on limited data. Uh, so we try to keep the pricing simple. We try to, you know, like I said, I want to keep things simple. That's the whole, that was the whole goal of launching Magnus Fox in the first place was to simplify my life. Uh, and I try to do the same across the board. And then also, if you don't mind me making a little uh, plug, quick pl plug here, Jeff, uh, we are going to be at TechCon Unplugged this year in Grand Rapids. So we're looking forward to uh, joining John down there and a few other of our partners. And, uh, we're going to hang out and have a good time in Grand Rapids talking to that. Excellent. Yes, we're and that will be exciting. Together. Oh, yeah. No, that is going to be awesome. And, you know, again, I'll, as I say on every Sunday afternoon, it's it's always amazing that the business owners and, you know, the, the guys that are willing to come on and give up their Sunday afternoon weekend to be with us here. So, you know, I include Mike in the, one of those community invested vendors that we're really looking for for TechCon Unplugged. So I, that's going to be awesome. You know, and, and if you come, you know, Mike's available all the time, obviously, if he's uh, answering at 2 a.m. in the morning. But if you want to, you know, press the flesh and meet him uh, face to face and, you know, really get the an introduction to the guy that's going to be protecting your customer's data, there's no better way to do that. Definitely. Yeah, I'm hoping if I get enough, uh, get enough people that are going to be coming that are our partners, maybe we can uh, sit down and have a talk about backup, you know, nothing better to talk about right there. <laughs> Yeah, that's that sounds like fun. No, it's. <laughs> I, don't know, I really feel that that was. <laughs> did I feel that was an earnest and not <laughs> just being honest? No, but the reality is, what we always try to do, and this is where the vendors and the the customers are able to come together, and so the IT business owners able to, to sit down, Mike, and talk with you face to face. You you get that face-to-face -face where you can see somebody's face when they're saying something, kind of figure out whether they're lying or not. Um, so it's it's a good situation to be in to figure out, hey, what are they doing? And you kind of have some frank conversations. People come up with ideas all the time. And quite honestly, I'm going to go back to what John said earlier. I'm so glad that you're available almost all the time, but you might need to set some parameters on that because that won't last forever. No, no. I mean... <clears throat> Like I said, nine to nine, Monday through Friday is our normal support hours. But if I'm just jamming out a quick email or if I or if I see an issue that's going to take a longer response time, I'll say, hey, got your email, going to look into us and I'll get back to you as soon as I have an answer. And I'm, I'm pretty good about it, aren't I, John? Oh, uh, yeah. Excellent. Excellent. I, I mean, I apologize to the people. I've had about six website chats pop in here <laughs> while we've been uh, on live and I'll, I'll get back to you guys afterwards. So I apologize. Come on, guys. There's only one mic. We get them for right now. You can have them at 530. For goodness <laughs> gracious. Squirrel. Oh. Uh. <laughs> a couple quick things that I'll list that are going to be in the notes for this show. But Mike has a lot of great information on his site. If you dig around a little bit, as far as YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn channels, uh, there is a full server status page, which I really love for all of the vendors I deal with. Uh, if there ever was a problem, I mean, it's just easier to check that server status page so that then I don't need to call the vendor if I know they're down and they can just let me know by a status page and maybe give me a little ETA to remediation. That is awesome. There's also a news, facts, and KB page uh, all at magnusbox.com, uh, which really makes it easy. I mean, branding issues, uh, like maybe you're not familiar with Linux, but you got a box out there, so you need to get Magnus Box on it. He walks you through all that with the KB, KB pages. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, Mike, just compared to the last time I was out here, it looks like you keep adding stuff to this as well. 
Yeah, I try. I'm just taking a look at it now. I try to remember to go in and update it, but I'm adding stuff all the time as I find problems that come up, which is where a lot of this stuff has come up with. Like we, there was an issue with the Mac OS branding. Uh, Apple changed something recently for every, what everyone loves now, and the current buzz term in the industry is the dark mode. <clears throat> and so we had a, we're working on getting a fix for that. And we also have our roadmap out there, our goals for this year, and try to keep it up to date. You know, as things come up or people bring things up, I'm like, hey, that's a good idea. Like Synology is one of our most requested backups, and it can be done, <clears throat> but right now it's through command line. We're working on with Comet to try to get a uh, native app that will back up Synology because. I never realized how many of those devices you guys had all planned out there. That is a lot of Synology boxes I've heard about. <laughs> so what is dark mode? Oh, that's like the new buzz term in the industry. And it's like where you, like, you'll have a white website, and then there's an option for dark mode, which makes it all black, which looks out great for us people who are up at you know, 2, 3 a.m. in the morning trying to work, and your eyes aren't being blasted with a bright white light. So I know Ubiquity just launched a uh, dark mode, Synchro, and maybe Repair Shopper, because they're all the same company there. Um, I think they have a dark mode for that platform as well. I, I, I like it. It helps, especially if you're working late at night. <laughs> so here, here's something that can also help with that. You can, like, get off the computer. Go to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> Chef, come on, brother. <laughs> I, can't, I can't tell you how many times I've gotten an email. And there's, there's someone like, okay, thanks for fixing my issue. Now it's time to go to bed. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, with the modern uh, monitors that we have nowadays, a lot of times the white is really, really bright. And although it's good for some things, there's a lot of things. Like right now on, on the screen, I've had to turn colors on. I use OneNote, and it is in dark mode. Uh, also, I was able to color the screen so it, it's not flashing right in my eyes, and I can read it better, and it's a lot easier, even though it's daytime. So I jest a little bit, but it, it's still funny the same. Um, <laughs> yeah. We no. do have confirmation from the chat that Repair Shopper does have dark mode. Right. And just in case nobody knows, in Windows 10, you can click on the little notification icon and turn on what's called nightlight, and it'll take you to sort of, uh, it's not dark mode, but it does uh, alleviate the uh, retinal burning white if you are working late at night. Yeah, like, it filters out like blue light or something. For, uh, yeah. for yes, it removes the blue light. You know, it turns your screen, well, I want to say a little amberish or orangish. You know, for those that don't know, know what that means. Um, Mike, what about any integrations? We got any integrations coming with any uh, RMMs or platforms or anything? Is there anything you can reveal there or anything that you are even considering? So I'm working on a script for Synchro. Um, I reached out to Synchro a few months back because we had a lot of attention or a lot of our partners want integration with Synchro. So I'm getting kind of to talk with them. I know it's in the works. And like I said, that's where they had, um, Getting, getting this message out here that we're a new company and that there must have been some uh, issues in the past, but we want to work with them to try to get that integration going. And uh, that's the main one that I know of right now is trying to get integrated into Synchro. Because you can do a silent deploy through command line. You just got to upload the files, include the username and password in the script, and then uh, you can push it out remotely to your endpoints. So you still got to configure it. So there is, we're working on getting some integrations pushed out from the main um products that everyone uses in their companies very cool nice all right. all right so i want everyone to collect your thoughts as we uh take one more quick break and uh before we get out of here john if people want to find a nice place to go where would they go and how would they get involved with something like that you know i would probably go over to patreon <clears throat> reach into your wallet, maybe give you a dollar per show or something like that, and then become part of the Computer Repair Podcast Facebook group, which is a nice, safe, and actually very valuable place to hang out uh, as part of the PodNuts family. Thank you very much. That is over at patreon.com forward slash computer repair podcast. Thank you, John. And, and I before anybody says anything, yes, I'm aware that I'm paying to be on the show as I am a Patreon member. Thank you very much. <laughs> Double dipping. I want to thank our two newest Patreon supporters, and that is Andre Wald and Jeff R. Grenier. Appreciate you guys giving to the show. And uh, I've already sent emails out in, uh, to get them in the Facebook group. And I want to thank all of our Patreon supporters for your continued support. We appreciate all that you do. All right. So, John, did you have yes. something? No, I was just going to say, hey, we're 120, I think 120 plus members strong. So, 
Um, it, it's just a great place to be. I, I'm always surprised at the questions I get answered, and it even a lot of the questions other people ask make uh, get, you know get the old brain juices flowing. Good stuff. You can you can plus one that I just signed up. Oh, nice. Ooh, one twenty one. Okay. <laughs> you adjust faces right on the page there. <laughs> my face. I always say we need to adjust my contract. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. Uh, Mike, is there anything that we haven't talked about uh, with Magnus Box that you want to bring to light right now? No, I think we covered it all. I mean, I just, you know, like I said, we are there for you, for the tech community. They, the tech community has been very welcoming. It's been a huge learning curve, like I said, shifting from a technician point, standpoint to a vendor standpoint. It's been a huge learning curve. And I just want to appreciate everyone that's reached out and kind of guided us. I mean, there was a, there was a lot in the beginning that helped us get off the ground and we just want to thank those people. I know you were one of them, Jeff, you were, you, me and John uh, sat in on a, on a meeting and we went over it. And that's when uh, that's what kind of triggered this whole entire adventure between that and Paco giving me that idea as he uh, always has good ideas. Yes, he does. <laughs> Paco is the man full of ideas for sure. He is. And I'm looking forward to seeing him again. I heard recently he was uh, up in our area here, John, you should have sent him this way. Oh, yeah, yeah. He, we uh, trade off. I go to Chicago. He comes up here every once in a while. Yeah, if we get over up there near the you know Saginaw area, we'll definitely pop in and see you. Yeah, I got a few people we can all meet up with here. We got a few other people in Saginaw that, that are uh, pretty involved in the Podnuts community as well. So <laughs> Good times. Good times. Very cool. John, any last any thoughts from you? No, thanks to Mike and thanks to everybody in the chat. Great questions. Um, I always appreciate that. Very cool. And Mike, so let everybody know right now where they can find out more about you and contact you and ask all the wonderful questions that they might have. Yep. So you can check us out on the internet at magnusbox.com. There we have a button where you can chat with me in real time as long as it's online. I, shut, I do shut that off after hours. Um, you can email me at mike at magnusbox.com. You can check us out on Facebook. We just got our Twitter page up and running. Um, got to figure out how to use a Twitter page. Uh, and then you can also, like I said, you can email me anytime. I'm more than willing to talk tech or recommendations or whatnot. I've always been more than welcome to share my experiences with the IT community. Very cool. And is that the Twitter or just Twitter? The Twitter. No. Okay. <laughs> the Facebook, the Twitter. It's, yeah, you're right. <laughs> We're also working on the MySpace page. No. <laughs> All right. Before we get on out of here, uh, I got one more thing. And this came to us from Door to Door Geek. And this is to let everybody know that computer repair, network support, what we do on a daily basis might be changing, but it's not going away. And this is an article from Ars Technica. Strong corporate desktop sales limit the decline of the PC market. Shortages of Intel processors are claimed to be a big part of the decline. But the PC market in the first quarter of 2019, this is where I found it most, most interesting, uh, it, and they've, they've got two different uh, people who go out there and get this information. And they both agreed about 58.5 million systems, desktop systems, were shipped. Now, those are desktops, laptops. Um, one of them included, I think, Ultrabooks, but nobody included, obviously, tablets or mobile. So uh, 58.5 million systems shipped in a year's time. That's a lot. And so I would say that, uh, yeah. We're not going anywhere anytime soon. And I will have the link for that in the show notes. Uh, all right. So I think with that, I think we've done everything we can. I think we're going to get out of here. And uh, one last shout out. If you can, I would encourage everyone to support Eric Gardini's family. After he lost his battle with cancer, we just had a 24-hour uh, telethon over the last uh, day. And that ended at noon this morning. And that was fun. Got to hang out with some people that I had not hung out with before and catch up with some people that I have not talked to in a long time. So that was really cool. Uh, and what, I will have a link in the show notes to help Eric Ardini and family on his Go, on a GoFundMe page. And uh, we'll have that information so you can go there. And I encourage everyone, just if you whatever you can give, just go ahead and do that, please. Because uh, obviously uh, the medical bills will never stop or, or they're not stopping. Uh, they still need to be paid, and we want to alleviate the financial burden for the family. All right, come join us for the Computer Repair Podcast every Sunday at 4 p.m. Eastern over at podnuts.com forward slash CRP live. 
Join in on conversation by hanging out in the chat room where you can ask questions. We're available there. You can send an email to podnets at podnets.com or leave a voicemail at 734-335-1000. I want to thank everyone for listening and subscribing to the show. We'll see you next time on the Computer Repair Podcast.